Good morning everyone. Here I am down at the Ark Encounter this morning, a beautiful sunny day, beautiful blue sky. Uh, it's beautiful to see uh, weather like this after all the storms that we've had here uh, the last few weeks. And you see the people pouring in. Uh, actually, I just checked my update on my phone and there's over 3,000 people here already today and it's not quite midday. Uh, so we were projecting 4,000 a day. I think it's going to go way over 4,000 because we usually get a lot more people in the afternoons as well. And we're open till 9 at night. Uh, so uh, we've only been open since, uh, let me see, 8.30. So, yeah, we, we've only been open uh, sort of three and a half hours. And we still got uh, nine hours to go. There are already 3,000 people here. So anyway... Uh, I wanted to give you a little update on some of the things that are happening around here. Uh, let's walk through. This is the West Village. Uh, actually, they're getting ready to open the potter's shop here behind me. That should be open by uh, the end of this week and by the weekend. And then there's an artisan shop up the top here that will also be open um, by uh, probably by Friday, but uh, certainly by the weekend. Uh, so we look over here. This is... I think it's the first time, uh, so we haven't set up all of our tables and, and umbrellas here yet, but uh, we've got a little stage here. And so uh, once we get all this area set up, you can see people sitting here eating hot dogs or roast beef sandwiches. Uh, and uh, we have some smoothies over there. Now we're, so we're opening a lot of different areas here uh, right now, as well as our big 1,500-seat restaurant. So this uh, helps take the pressure off the restaurant for, for lunch by having some of these outside areas. This is Zofar's. Uh, this just opened recently, and they have all sorts of, um, all sorts of sandwiches, hot dogs, brats, things like that. And then back behind there, the artisan shop, they're just getting ready to, uh, they're starting to stock that today with fair trade materials and we're going to have an artisan in there who actually paints. Uh, in fact, uh, the talented artist from Mexico uh, is going to reside in there with the things that he does. And here in front of the restrooms, you can see we have a coffee shop that should be open very soon. We have another coffee shop down underneath the ark. Uh, but this one uh, is uh, almost ready. So a lot of these, we've been held up by all the rain, all the storms, uh, is the problem. And you see our uh, lemonade stand there. So what I'm going to do is fresh lemonade. And that's very, very popular. On a hot day like today, uh, it's really popular. And uh, we should come over here for a moment. And I'll uh, just... Uh, ask him here. So you're on my Facebook live yeah. when you make uh, the lemonade use a real lemon right? Yep. I'll show so you. you want to show me? Okay. Yeah we have the cups. Right. Did you want me to make you one? Uh, oh no you don't need to make one right now but you can show us how you do it. Yeah. Take the lemon, put it in here, put it up. Okay. And then we add some of this special sugar. Non-calorie sugar, right? Yeah, it's low calorie. It's got some kind of lemon flavoring in it. Okay, so it even enhances the lemon in it. Yeah. And then cold water and ice. Well, we mash it up first. Ah, oh, okay. You can see that it's fresh. Are these very popular? Oh yeah, sell them all day. Sell them all day, yeah. Well, out here in the sun, people like a nice hot lemon drink. Okay, there we go. So you can get nice lemonade drink here at the uh, Ark Encounter. How many of these stands do we have? We got two? We got two, one here and one down yep. near the Penning Zoo. Okay, so excellent, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, you have a good day. All right, let's jump in this uh, little machine here, this Kawasaki here, and uh, I'll put uh, our videographer in the front here. Uh, I don't even know how to open the door. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's run over to the East Village. I want to show you what's happening over there, uh, the new stuff that we have. Um, because we're putting in the monument stones, 
Uh, we've got, let me see, the toperies. Looks like we've got six of the toperies in now. We've got two more to come. The two elephants are missing. Okay, so they're stuffing them with uh, moss right now. Okay, so we're going by the lake. You see they've done all the landscaping around the lake now. So that is finished. And that has really enhanced the whole front of the arc here, as you can see. And uh, I see one of the tour buses uh, coming up here. We might be able to just get a... Oh, there's two tour buses coming up here. Uh, actually, since... Probably since March, uh, the tour buses have started coming and we'll just slow down here a little bit to get them as they come around the corner here. But it's nothing now to have 40 of these tour buses a day here at the Ark. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, you've got the secular media and the seculars uh, who are trying to downplay what's happening here. But um, uh, you've got to just come here and see it for yourself and uh, realize they just are so upset that so many people coming from all over uh, the world uh, that are coming here. And these bus tours, as I said, it's nothing to have 40 40 of these tours, uh, 40 of these buses a day here, sometimes more than that. And on the same day as today, we might have, say, 40 odd buses here, but there'll be another 30 or so at the Creation Museum. And these people are all in town, which is one of the, one of the reasons why it's hard to get a hotel room anywhere in the area. So let's go down here and uh, we'll be able to show you on one side. Then we're going to go down to the zoo. I want to see the kangaroos down there and some of our new animals. We might be able to meet the person in charge of the zoo. Um, and you can see the fencing here because behind here there's bird aviaries. I see those aviaries are nearly ready. They've got the cages there, the heated aviaries, so during the winter the birds will be inside uh, in the nice warm. And you see those monument stones. There's signs that go with those, but they have hieroglyphs on them and they tell the whole history of the world from a biblical perspective. Um, and as we go down here, uh, you see another bird aviary down the end down here. So this will all be open, um, I'd say, I think they're aiming right now by the 7th of July that this will be open. And we're going to blacktop uh, the path through there as we've done. So what we'll do is we'll drive up here just a little bit and then turn around and face the toperies, just so you can see the toperies. If you can have a look to at the end of the ramp and see the 12 stones there, we've got a sign coming for that and then we're going to open that up so people can go up there and get their photograph taken with the 12 stones. Of course, uh, reminding us of the 12 stones of Joshua, which is a reminder to pass on to the coming generations the truth of God's word and also to uh, the world around us. Uh, so we'll just look down here. We see uh, we have here the uh, giraffes and we have the lions and we have the camels. We've got two elephants to go and these are already popular and uh, you see it taking a photograph there in front of one of the toperies and the beautiful lake so uh, let's turn around and zip down to the zoo quickly uh, so we can um, we'll go past the front of the ark so that you can see uh, the ark there see the people uh, coming in so this is a what's today today's a Wednesday today a Wednesday is usually a low day and we're now well over 3,000 people here uh, today. Um, let's see how we're going. Uh, just give you some of the numbers here. Oh yeah, yeah, we're, we're well, oh, they've increased our projection for the day uh, to possibly, well, yesterday we had 4,600 people here. That was on a Tuesday and today it looks like uh, we'll have around the same amount and because it's it's just after 12 I wouldn't be surprised if it's even more than that today because it's uh, busier this morning than it was yesterday morning uh, so, so I think that is very indicative of uh, a bigger crowd than we even projected so as you come around uh, here you see Mzara's restaurant actually on the left there there's a new little store going in there that's for the pizza right now we we, we have the pizza inside of the 1500 seat restaurant but that's going to come outside there and then down on the other side of the restaurant, you'll see a building going up there. Uh, we've got a smoker that's going to do smoked brisket there. So we've got to have plenty of food for everybody, and that's what we've had a lack of here. We had the big restaurant, uh, but when you get thousands of people daily, and, and July is even going to be much bigger than June, uh, we needed more places to feed people. Uh, here's our other lemonade stand uh, that you can uh, see there. and. Uh, uh, I know on hot days like today, uh, it's very, very popular. So, 
We're going to go down here to the zoo and the petting zoo. We want to go down and uh, say hi to the kangaroos. We had two joeys here that are now growing, but uh, kangaroos that were actually born here at the Ararat Ridge Zoo. So we have a zoo and we have a petting zoo. At the Cretion Museum we have a petting zoo only. Here we have a zoo and a petting zoo. And we have a sluice uh, that had pump issues and I think they've got that fixed now. It looks like it's working now. Yeah, it looks like they just got that working uh, to get the sluice working again. We have some donkeys in there. See the new restrooms over there? It's a whole set of restrooms that have gone in for uh, the zoo area and uh, we just got to put some ramps on those and uh, then we'll have instant restrooms. Um, so we come down here and see if we can meet somebody from the zoo here and we'll, we want to go and uh, say hi to the uh, kangaroos. So we'll jump out here and see how we're going. You can see the camels and the donkeys. Camel rides, donkey rides here are really, really popular. You can uh, see they're getting ready, ready for the day's uh, camel rides and donkey rides. And, you know, we wanted this to be, uh, it's a place where people can learn about God's Word, but it's a place where uh, people uh, can have fun as well, where families uh, can have fun. So, um, I see they have... Uh, the is that the hedgehog in there? Oh, no, that's uh, so, yeah, hiding behind that cage. We'll come back there in a moment, and I need to find. Do you know where our zoo person is? We had someone who was going to meet us here somewhere. So uh, I see the kangaroos over there. Let's go over to the to the other side. And uh, so we can see the kangaroos. They move the kangaroos over in here. See, they, they make changes every day here. The zoo and petting zoo is very popular. And we, we're going to be actually expanding the whole zoo right up to behind the ark. And as we do that, we add a lot more teaching about kinds. That's one of the reasons. Well... Obviously the ark had lots of animals and God created animals and we want to do a lot of teaching about kinds. We already do some, but we're going to enhance that a lot. And, you know, we can only do everything little by little, of course. And uh, so uh, that's why we're able to add and expand and it continues to be enhanced on a, on a daily basis. Okay, we can see the kangaroos in there. You can see the, the little ones that are there as well. Okay, so we had uh, two, two kangaroos that were born here, and I believe that's both of them right there, and now they're, they're out of the pouches, and uh, getting bigger. Oh, they grow so quickly. The last time I saw them, they were in a pouch and saw little heads sticking out. So, all right, well, we did have a zoo person that was going to be here for us, and f for some reason, they disappeared, so... We're going to go back around the other way here. And you can see here. Hi. Where are you guys from? Uh, Shelbyville, Kentucky. Oh, Shelbyville. That's not too far away. Yeah. Kentucky. That's good. We've got people from Kentucky here. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, heading, oh, here. Here comes our, our zoo person. That's what I call them, zoo person. Hi. How are you, sir? Good. Good. Good to see so, you. So, um, you want to show us the kangaroos? Yeah, let's go in. We'll okay. And Matt's on his way out with some reptiles as well. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. I called you a zoo person. <laughs> I am What's a zoo What's your official per title? Uh, animal presenter. Animal presenter. Yeah. Okay. Johnny. Johnny the animal presenter. There you go. Okay. So, we'll go in and uh, see these kangaroos. Now, two of these were born here, right? Three of them. Three of them? Right? Yeah, two of them are out of the pouch now, and one's uh, sticking her head out of the pouch. Oh, really? We might be able to see her, too. See, I haven't been keeping up with all this. <laughs> I've been traveling too much. 
I thought you only had two. Yeah, I can. Well, he wants us to take through the front. Do you mind climbing through the window, Ken? Uh, climbing through the window, okay. <laughs> yeah. He, want, he wanted me to take it the front, but we were closer to here. So All right, I know whether you want this on video. That's the only thing. Yeah. You do? <laughs> me climbing through the window? Okay, at my age. Oh, there we go. All right. Oh, I can see the ones sticking out of the pouch yeah, that's there. That's the youngest one. Joey. Yeah, look at him. You can see his, looks like his legs sticking out, his tail sticking out of the pouch. Okay, so that one's still in the pouch, as you can see. We were already here, sorry. <laughs> and we've got more, we've got some other interesting uh, animals coming here. Oh, it, this is a fellow Aussie. So I'm meeting a fellow Aussie. Hi, fellow Aussie. Native to the land down under. Kangaroos, wallabies, paddy melons, all sorts of different species that are uh, in the kangaroo kind, we would call it. And uh, at, at the Creation Museum, we actually have Bennett's wallabies. So that's one of the young ones? Yep, that's the okay. second oldest. That's the second oldest? That's the oldest there. And that's the oldest there. And then you already saw the youngest. And the youngest one is in the pouch. Yeah. So we'll go back in here. We'll go in here and see what uh, Matt, who heads up our zoo area. Hi there. So Matt, what's your exact title? I am Director of Living Collections. Director of Living Collections. What do we have here? It's a nice way to say zoo director. Okay. <laughs> zoo director. And this is Ramsey's. He, he was making a sound. Yeah, he's, he's huffing and puffing right now. Hmm. And um, you want to say something? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not right now. He's a little uh, mic shy. Oh, okay. But this is our Ramsey's, our Nile monitor lizard. Okay. He's only a year and a half old, so he's still just a baby. He can get up to about nine feet long, Ken. Mm, really? So he'll be longer than you are tall. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. But he's an African animal, and he gets his name from the Nile River, yeah. where they spend a lot of their time swimming and uh, hunting crocodiles, actually. Oh, okay. Baby crocs, not the yeah. big ones. Yeah. Um, so that's where he gets his name from. They they come from the uh, eastern part of Africa to the middle to the northern part of Africa. Yeah, you can see, you can hear him expressing his yeah he was himself there a little bit. Yeah, he was. Usually, when these guys get out of their exhibits right yeah. at the beginning, they're a little excited. So that's kind of what he's showing off right now. Now we do a lot of animal programs here and on the second deck too, right? We take animals up to the second deck. Correct. Yeah, and he's one of our animal ambassadors that goes up there as well. Okay. Oh, you call them animal ambassadors. Animal ambassadors, right. It's excellent. So pretty much every animal in the zoo is an ambassador okay. for their kind in the wild. So, so, so tell us um, some of the animals we have here now. Just list them off real quickly. So we have ostrich, emu, kangaroo, llamas, alpacas, Tibetan yaks, goats, camels, donkeys. And then we have five different kinds of lizards. We have tarantulas. Uh, we actually have an armadillo that we use occasionally for the... What do we have in that first uh, pen in there? Oh, that is our African crested porcupine. Oh, it is. Yeah, so okay. he gets... That's Gideon. Yeah. And Gideon's not even a year old yet, and he gets to get out for the first time today. Okay. Or, or, actually, can I we have a sneak a look at him in a minute? Yeah, we can. Open the window there or something, have a look at him. And even though he looks ominous, he's pretty cool. Now, we, we've also got a list of animals we're going to add to the expansion when we do it. Starting late, um, we're going to start later this year and expand it ready for March next year. So, what are the animals that we've got that we're going, uh, in the list? Some of those are the zebra, and we're also going to move the ostrich up there with them as well. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have ring-tailed lemurs. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a real, one of the highlight yep. species. It's really really cool. Collared peccaries, a um, bear cat for the Cincinnati fans. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so it's actually called a binturong. Is a, it's an actual name, but a bear cat is their common name. Okay. And then uh, some of the other animals collections that we're going to have up there are still growing. Okay. So uh, we keep adding to the zoo and the petting zoo. It's sort of unique animals and a lot of teaching animals and um, creatures that people don't normally get to see. Right. Which they'll be able to get to see up close here. And so it's, to, it's a different sort of zoo, isn't it? It is. It is. And we're trying to do as many kinds as possible mm -hmm. so that we can show a good representation of maybe what Noah would have carried on the ark. Like we have llamas and alpacas and camels because they're all the one kind, right? Correct. So I don't want to step on the kangaroo there. <laughs> so, so which one has the pouch? Oh, this one has the pouch with the young in it. 
Is it? Nope. Not nope. Her. It's not her. It's uh, one of the others. Oh, she's up front. Oh, I see. Yeah. There she is. So could we look in the window over here and see the porcupine, you think? Oh, what do we have here first? We have more monitors. So all of these guys are in the monitor kind together. So Ramsey's is a Nile monitor. This is Malachi. He's a white-throated monitor because he's got that ivory throat. Um, he's full grown. And then this is our newest addition. Uh, this is uh, the first introduction of our baby Savannah monitor. Um, so it's only about five months old. We're not sure of the gender yet because she's so, or it's so young. Um, but she is a Savannah monitor. These guys are all native to Africa. You mean together. you can actually talk about gender when you talk about animals? Just, yeah. Just not when you talk about humans <laughs> these days, is that it? <laughs> Basically. <Yeah. laughs> it's ridiculous, well, we're, isn't it? We're usually restricted to two genders anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, would that be male and female? It would be. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Just want to make sure. So Malachi is a white-throated monitor. Um, he's about full-grown. He's five years old. He can live to be 20 years old, though, 12 to 20. Um, and he can get up to 20 pounds. Savannah monitor over there, she'll get um, just a little bit under him. Um, she's going to get about the same size body-wise, oh, but really? her, her yeah. tail is much is going to be much shorter. So he gets another foot on her um, as far as growth. So this one's going to vocalize for us. <laughs> uh, we already got that <laughs> did you? over the microphone. Yeah, it was hissing for us. Uh, did he show off his uh, behavior of sniffing you by using his tongue? Um, uh, he, 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 he did that for the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, he's coming for the microphone. Malachi will usually show off how he hi. likes to sniff. There, there we go. So he has a forked tongue just like a snake does, so, and he uses that in Jacobson's again. organ. There you, you want to sniff it? Yeah, oh, he's sniff. sleepy. <laughs> yeah. well, he did once. There we go. And the forked tongue, too, one of the coolest things about the varanid lizards, which these are all from the family Varanidae, and the Teguid lizards. They're the forked tongue lizards. Mm -hmm. And the forked tongue allows them to analyze and decipher their environment mm -hmm. on an instant. Hmm. So they're super intelligent and they can analyze their environment really, really quick. So these are the smartest of the reptiles as well. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, let's uh, go over here. Could you give us a sneak look at the yeah, porcupine? Absolutely. Open the window there. All right. So. Yeah, you can open up the. Well, the kangaroos are, are very tame, aren't they? Yeah. So, okay, we're going to run in here and unlock this so we can come and uh, see our porcupine here. First day out, is that right? First day out? Yes. Yeah, first day on exhibit. First day on exhibit. Wow. I feel like an exhibit right now. <laughs> inside, inside the fences here. There we go. So, oh, there he is. So this is Gideon. He's our uh, year-old African crested uh, porcupine. And uh, he's just chilling in the shade right now. But uh, he's a... Uh, he's timid. First, first day on exhibit. Yeah, it is. Um, he's in a rodent kind, so he would be uh, related to rats and, and the mice and guinea pigs, stuff like that. And uh, so he does eat... Um, Apples, fruit, vegetables. We feed him a rodent pellet as well as a little bit of dog food. And uh, he loves bananas. That's his favorite. So he just turned a year old in May. Excellent. Can you tell him how big he is? Because I have a okay. perspective. Yeah, yeah he's could, could you put your hand up there, Nina? Yeah, I might be able to get up. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get in this, through the window here. There we go. No, we don't have to be worried about those quills or anything? No, and a lot of people think they could throw the quills. In actuality, it's kind of like uh, loose hair. It falls out. Oh, okay. Leave it to a bald guy to leave, tell you about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's what happens. As a defense, they'll shake and rattle their, uh, like that. They'll yeah. rattle their quills a little bit. Uh, but no, if he gets scared, what he'll do is he'll flare those up and he'll actually back into what he's scared to. Like me? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not too afraid of you, Maria. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Well, that's what we wanted uh, to do today, show you just a few of the unique animals. We have a lot more, of course, and they have a lot more smaller animals as well, and they do special workshops down here. 
and special programs up on the second deck. You yeah. often do those, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. And we're actually going to hopefully start doing um, on the West Village, too, at the stage. Oh, on the stage area to do some there as well. Yeah, we'll do a little uh, and animal program. Then we're building a 2,500-seat multi-purpose room as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited For next that. year, and then we'll be able to do some really good animal programs in yeah, there as well absolutely. as our other uh, presentations, too. So, well, Matt, I appreciate you uh, bringing out some of the animals. We have a lot, a lot of other smaller animals, too, don't we? Yeah, we do. So, got some more information on the savannah. Oh, okay, I'll come back out there. <laughs> <laughs> if I can get out and get my leg over. Here we go. All right. Some more information on the savannah. All right. We got the savannah really young so that um, we can handle her a lot more, so she'll be a lot more docile. Monitors are really hard to handle, especially um, Nile monitors, mm -hmm. if they're not docile. So it's really rare to find a good docile monitor. Um, so savannas, they're very smart. They can actually um, eat poisonous millipedes. Hmm. They uh, found a way to secrete. Is that all smart? <laughs> to eat a poisonous millipede? I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. <laughs> so what they do is they rub their chin on the millipede for about 15 minutes, and it secretes all its poison, and then they can eat it. Ah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and they also have flat teeth, so they can eat snails. They can crush the shells and then get the snail. Escargot. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All righty. Well, um, you guys doing any animal presentations today? Yep, we do them throughout the day up on Arca on second deck. So what are you uh, taking up there today? Uh, we have some goats, and then who else do we have? We have jo uh, Jethro, our red tegu, is up there right now, uh, and Joshua, our bearded dragon. Oh, okay. Yep, the so bearded dragon. They have that's a work a, schedule, That's too. another Australian, the bearded dragon. Mm -hmm. Stanford, yep. Australia, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And the blue tongue skin. He's off today, though. Yeah, he's off today. <laughs> they get okay. off days, that, too. He's from Australia as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, there we are. We're giving you a little look at uh, some of the things going on, expanding around the ark, and some of the new things that will be opening very soon and at the end of the week, and uh, a little look at some of our animals here. And on the second deck every day, what time are you up there on the second deck? 10 to 5. 10 to 5. So 10 to 5 on the second deck. Right opposite the door, actually, mm -hmm. and the door is one of the favourite exhibits for people mm -hmm. uh, there. And uh, you, you'll uh, you'll have a lot of people up there today. And in, in fact, I'm doing a meet and greet up there today uh, on the second deck at uh, 1:30. And I'm just looking here just to get an update and to see how we're going. So we're oh uh, yeah, we're well over 3,000 now, well on the way to 4,000 people, right. and uh, it's going to be a big day. Mm -hmm. So, well, great. Great having you all here. Uh, Thank thanks you. for showing us the animals. I see, oh, look, we can see the Joey. Is that the Joey's tail sticking out of the pouch there? Tail and Pete. Tail and Pete. Maybe we'll get a close-up of that, Maria, and then we'll end off here. Go over there and uh, see the tail and feet of our number three, number three kangaroo. Do you give them a birth certificate that they were born at the Ark or something like that? Uh, because that's pretty unique, you know. Not many animals born at Noah's Ark. So there we are. You can see the tail and feet sticking out of uh, that particular joey. Fascinating creatures, aren't they? Marsupials. They are the pouched mammals. Oh, you can see those. He looks like he's, he must be asleep, having a great time in there. It'd be nice and dark in there, wouldn't it? So, alrighty. Well, we're going to sign off here from the Ark. Uh, so, have a great day and come visit us. Go to arkencounter.com, arkencounter.com. Find out more information about the Ark Encounter and join the thousands that are visiting here uh, every day. Okay, we're signing off.